Hello to the channel. Welcome back everyone. Thanks very much everyone for watching the rewards video on Friday. Loads of views on that. Um, well, Fodden doing pretty well as well today, so uh, it's turned out to be a good win. Um, it's obviously going to be a good win anyway, it's Phil Fodden. So, um, so yeah, it's been a fun weekend of football. Um, got the, my, the Messi and Suarez show on last night as well, that was pretty nice, so I stayed up a bit and watched that, I must say. Um, not really a big fan of Orlando's defending, but there we go. So, get the lineup video out a wee bit earlier, I thought it would be a good idea to spend a wee bit more time on it. So, midweek coming up, um, some more difficult matchups, etc. But sometimes some really good opportunities to, um, to win midweek as well, you just never know. So, that's what we're going to do. So, I think before that, we'll have a quick run through what's happening in the gallery. Um, as usual, find it quite difficult to actually retain a balance. I'm sure everybody will sympathise with that. Like, you've got a balance, you're just like, oh, so I want him and I want him and I want him and everything. So, so there we go. Yeah, that was the, the win. Phil Fodden, like, um, unbelievable. 100 today as well, two goals. First one was absolute beauty as well. So, what else has been happening? Well, the famous Tommy McNamara. Um, <laughs> this is a personal buy for anybody in the Surrey Odyssey. Um, every month do a, I sort of zoom they'll have a laugh and we'll decide to buy Tommy McNamara it's just the way it went Um, there we go no need to explain it any further do not take Tommy McNamara as a top tip on so rare um, Carol Hine so yeah pretty good young goalkeeper doing pretty well um, well he's a st the Estonian goalkeeper so he always pretty much in demand when there's international games on. Estonia or this Nations League thing, you know, are quite low down, so um, didn't do too well in the qualifiers. I do think that Arsenal will try and get him alone. Um, championship would be awesome. Um, we'll see. Um, the last one about Bergstrom from Chelsea, and he's went to Sweden, which isn't actually covered, but it's good to see him getting games. Um, Julian Gressel watched the game, as I said last night, he was playing in midfield. Um, I think a bit of news since that um, Yedlin's going, I think. So that's a shame because Gressel might go back to right back. But, you know, Miami are a pretty attacking team, to be honest. Um, made sure I got the defender card as well, you know. Miami don't keep many clean sheets, but they did last night. So um, there we go. I think the defender card's probably higher peaks. And 50 quid, you know, use that in the classic challenger competitions as they're going to be after the end of the month. And Alan Velasco, I mean, can't really believe the price of this card. I mean, he is injured just now, so probably going to be out for an hour. I don't know, I think estimates an hour, six to eight weeks or whatever. But um, yeah, really good young player. He's had a bit of a bad injury, but um, compared to the rare price, this is just mega, mega low. So um, your man who's selling it, I think, is getting rid of quite a lot of cards and um, just kept reducing it. So I hit the point where I was like, no, I just can't. Uh, even if he's injured or whatever, that's just, just great value. Obviously, look at the age in the card, 20, I think he's 21 now, but a um, couple of years under 23s left, um, plays in the MLS, summer usage, you know, um, really good player as well. I've got his rare, so so there we go. Um, Noah Raveria, or Revere, um, Milan under 19 goalkeeper, so that's a guy who's been kind of fallen since he was at St. Etienne, he was always quite highly rated, so... Um, so we'll see how he develops. Still very, very young, still only 18, but if you get a gig in Serie B, that would be really good. And never really intended to buy Stefan Ortega Moreno, but some just getting a sort of um, notification up saying somebody had listed it under the, the sort of price I was looking for. And this just kind of cover Ederson, but very capable goalkeeper. And you know what it's like, like, you know, big clubs, they have like these um, sort of goalkeepers and they sit there and they're good backups and eventually they get fed up and they want to play somewhere. So, you know, it's give cover for Ederson. Um, you know, if he was to get injured just now, um, there would be a lot of demand for him and, you know, guys only like 30 or whatever, you know. So I think it's a really, really solid buy. Makes sense for me anyways. Um, so let's have a look at the spreadsheet. Um, let's have a look at what's happening midweek. Um, see what... What we sort of fancy games wise, so there are quite a few midweek games on. So we've got sort of um, some Champions League games, some Europa League games, etc. And um, one or two um, games in the actual Championship as well. So no Celtic, although <laughs> after this weekend's performance, maybe that's not a bad thing. So 
we shall say no more. So Man City right up there, I mean, that, that stands out. Um, Copenhagen got a good result, I think, against Man United at um, Old Trafford and stuff. But yeah, Man City, you can see today, Man City are a different kettle of fish to Man United. No offence to Manchester United fans. Um, Rashford scored a great goal, but you know, Manchester City were all over them. So, you know, I think quality-wise, you'd expect that Man City will get the job done at home. Um, Rotation-wise, there's always some sort of rotation with teams, um, or not teams, Pep. Pep teams, um, Alvarez didn't start, so so I think he, I'm going to be sort of earmarking him. He's pretty sure that he'll um, get a start. It's a big game. They've got to win, obviously, so I think they'll go too mental, but um, got a lot of guys today that started on the bench, like, you know, Akanji and guys like that you would you would fancy will, will come in midweek. Um, Bayern Munich against Lazio in Bayern Munich. Been pretty poor recently. Um, Leverkusen 10 points clear now, which is <laughs> just how funny. Like, Kane goes all this time and is like, right, I'm leaving Tottenham. I'm going to Bayern Munich. I want to make sure I win something. Bayern Munich are like the serial winners, and then they're just getting absolutely knocked out of the park by Chavi Alonso and Leverkusen and Grimaldo and Frimpong and all the lads. Um, good on them. Um, but there we go. Just find that funny. So, so yeah, quite a high clean sheet percentage and expect team goals. Uh, what I would say is, come up against Lazio, seen, um, was that the Lazio game? Celtic. So, um, Celtic pretty unlucky not to beat them at home and um, wasn't in the game away from home, but watching the game, Celtic controlled a lot of the tempo and stuff. So, Lazio can be more of a sort of, they'll sit in type team. So, you'd imagine that um, this game might also suit Kind of high possession base for Bayern Munich as well, have a lot of pressure. Um, Coventry, um, small stacks kind of out there, so pretty good fish for them. Leeds United as well. So, yeah, I mean, Leeds, um, they've been on some form, didn't get a good result at the weekend, but guys at Somerville, etc., are always quite dangerous. So, I don't really have any of those guys that have Mesley anymore either. Um, but, yeah, um, worth bearing in mind if you do have those guys. Al Hilal, um, so some of the um, Asian Champions League um, games are popping up now as well. So if you've got guys in there, pretty interesting. Um, 2.25 expect team goals. So yeah, everybody was also fearing um, Saudi Arabia and all that type of stuff. But I think it's probably more of a risk now if your players go to Saudi Arabia rather than actually fearing it. I mean, with the contender thing, I'm sure if Saudi Arabia ever do get a deal, then likelihood is they're going to go into contender or challenger. They're not going to go into champions. So, you know. Um, might be a bit more redundant than it was in the past as well. Bayern Leverkusen, so yeah, against big Carabag, um, quite high clean sheet percentage and expected team goals. So uh, it was just a shame I got Hradecki. Um, it was a really good win, so it's nice to have a nice in season card. But usually they play Kovar, the backup guy, and do a bit of rotation. So be interested to see what point Xavi Alonso says we'll only have ten points clear in the league. So probably going to win that anyway. Um, Obviously, to big Harry Kane, um, and they'll they'll go quite serious here. But yeah, I mean they've been they've been phenomenal. And even when they have rotated a wee bit, they've got a real identity style of play. Um, Southampton, so pretty good. I mean, score a lot of goals, but like you just go through these spells where you concede so many goals. So Bazuna must be really frustrating to hold. I don't hold him either, anymore either. But there we go. Real Madrid against Leipzig. So. Um, quite a low expect um clean sheet percentage. Um, watched that game against Valencia. Actually, that was um kind of interesting, controversial at the end. Um, Valencia just were weren't really in the game. Then scored and end up two 0 up, and you know Real really fought back. Um, but what an ending! It's just so weird, like you know, blowing the whistle whilst the guy was crossing the ball in. Like, um, there we go. But I'm sure it was quite funny seeing Real Madrid having all the petulance and all the everything's all against us because like, everybody's been playing all season but the referee's been against them so so there we go um, but expect team goals around about two um, so you imagine they'll score a few goals Aston Villa I actually think of a pretty good game um, see it looks like a quite a good fish for Aston Villa again we watched Aston Villa against Luton and they look like a pretty good team um, there's no two ways about it they've got a lot of good players um, Ajax really kind of struggling these days but you know so all in the night type thing. Um, New England Revolution against Alachur. 
LD, we'll call him Big LD. Um, so yeah, looks like a reasonable fixture for the Revs as well. Um, Callis Gilback playing just now, so the game's on just now as I'm recording this and he's in the starting lineup, so that'll be good news for Revs aficionados. Um, I imagine that he'll probably come off a bit early and they'll, they'll, they'll want him available for that game as well. Um, Benfica against the Rangers. Um, unusual set of results in Scotland at the weekend. Rangers, the Rangers losing at home to Motherwell and then Celtic um, playing against 11 players plus the VAR official and the referee um, and down to 10 men lost 2-0. Um, so not the highest clean sheet percentage um, but Benfica are at home. I think Rangers will struggle on this one. I mean um, I think there's a bit of a golfing class now. I know um, they just won their group, etc. But yeah, I think that Benfica will have will have too much. Um, so one point eight nine expected team goals. Can understand that, but you know if Motherwell can take two goals off Rangers, well, they expect Benfica will score a couple. So let's hope they do. Moving on, um, AC Milan against Slava Prague. Um, Quite a decent fixture for them. You've got Ipswich Town, Houston Dynamo, so you've got Houston against Columbus. Quite interesting as well. Um, Leicester playing against Sunderland. I thought I'd be probably higher up actually, but you know, Leicester, um, Sunderland have been sort of struggling. And you've got Liverpool against Sparta Prague. Um, you know, I mean, um, Big Kelly Hare's getting a run now and he's, he's doing pretty well. I mean, um, I imagine Liverpool, they don't, they don't have a lot of scope to rotate these days with all the injuries etc so this stage of the competition must be taking it pretty seriously as well but um you know Bill even been playing a lot of the younger guys in the um the games in the league and everything as well have a quick look at the um, clean sheet percentages and after that um should be fed up listening to me um if you're not you can keep watching um but we'll, we'll actually pick some lineups as well um, so Manchester City featuring high in both metrics um, Bayern Munich as well Carabobo is that not the, the sponsors of the cup down in England um, on the list but not licensed um, Leverkusen and Newell's old boys so that's pretty good for me actually having um, Big Ramiro McAgno. Um been quite patient with him as well you know playing last season as well but it's good to see him back at Newell's and hopefully Touchwood solidified as number one. Southampton actually pretty high in the clean sheet percentages of pretty hit and miss type team as well. And no other real sort of standouts there. So yeah, you know, I think the the thing is it's quite a, a fun sport midweek. I mean you don't get a lot of overwhelming type lineups. That's that's the kind of thing with midweek. So, you know, um it's it's a bit more um difficult, but if you hit then can be quite rewarding. So All Star Super Rare, um, this is a competition I'll miss. I mean, pretty good prizes there. So I think I'm gonna start there, um, just from my own point of view, um, just to see what I've got super rare wise, and then we'll we'll have a look at the other stuff in terms of rare, etc. Under twenty threes, which is still my favourite competition, right? I mean, it's just like I love the under twenty threes. Like I think part of my strategy might just be to just just enter that as many times as I can, in all honesty. But there we go. So yeah, Ramiro McCagno quite high up. Um, remember, you can't actually sort of it's not kicked in in terms of using cards in the lower scarcity and everything yet. That's that's later on. Um, Virgil, interestingly, Virgil doesn't really seem to get rotated much these days, so that's kind of interesting. Um, Valentin Gomez quite a reasonable expect score there as well. Frimpong again. He came off at half time today and then he's suspended. So I'd imagine he'll probably start this game actually. Um interestingly. Um a wee bit disappointed Joseph Burzik never get a game for Club Bruges. So played Jackers, but I think that suggests Burzik probably will away in the summer. He had a bit of a bad injury as well, but you know, I think that um yeah, I hope he goes back to the championship, that would be ideal. Um Joe Willis, that's home to Miami, I think, so Pretty tough fixture, um, although um, Nashville are pretty good at home. Um, John Stone, so again, he played today, he's played the last couple of games, so he had a fear rotation a wee bit with um, 
big Pep roulette kicking in. And we've got midfield wise, so Griffo again. Griffo's been rotated a wee bit in Europe, so that's interesting. Um, some sort of risks there. I think that's the thing. Like you, you find that a lot of these teams, you know, they are rotating for the midweeks, and then Alvarez, um, kind of stand out there. So a couple of options forward wise, but nothing really sort of um outrageous. So I guess I was going to make a good All Star Super Rare team, and then. If I feel like I need to drop guys down, then we can sort of go about that. Um, so we Miro McAgno. Um, so I'll probably play Frimpong. I mean, um, Virgil, I think you're probably going to have in like a All Star Plus or Champion type team. I think um, it's been nice to pair him with Kelly here, you know. So um, midfield wise, so unusual to see the Fenerbahce guys so high up. And the actual averages, but so low in the expected scores. But USG are a pretty serious team. Orkin Cockshire, again, Benfica will be rotating a wee bit. Um, so that's kind of interesting. Hanny Mukhtar never even made it at the weekend. Danny Parejo is a way to Marseille. So uh, I think I'd probably go with Griffo. Um, Probably has a go Alvarez in here, although as I said, Alvarez may well come out of this and go into the actual under 23s. Because um, I'm not sure if I'm really too behind this as a entry. I mean, I think that's one piece of advice to give to people who are like, oh, what's, what's the point of me watching you putting in your super rare teams? But if you're putting in a team, it's always good to try and kind of maximise um, how you feel about that team in the competition. So these guys are not appearing that high up in terms of the expected scores, so you know, probably quite hard to beat like a Manchester City stack or, or a Leverkusen stack if somebody's got it to get the team right or whatever. Um so that that's where it's kind of interesting. Um I think we'll Canales. I was away from home, but um there we go. There we go with Alvarez captain. I say I might move Cat Alvarez um to the under twenty threes. In all honesty, but let's see. We'll do under twenty threes next. That'll be let's say one of my favourite competitions in general. I'll really miss the sort of rare plus or rare pro versions of these, honestly. I really will, but as for as it's going now, so <laughs> um, so there we go. So a Tribune Vastly, vastly underrated. I think. I mean, Rangers do score a fair amount of goals, so I suppose I can kind of see that. But yeah, I mean, there's only real one selection. I think for me, it's, it's nice to see Thomas Guiley playing as well. Um, so I've got, I've got a rule there where they um, need a player under twenty or something. He's been um, fulfilling that now, so that's quite interesting. Um, and I think Benfica are going to take this pretty seriously as well. So you know, I'd imagine Antonio Silva pretty high expected score. So imagine yeah if we're going to go with that then that would that would make sense i don't think they'll mess about too much in that game um culture again yeah i'm just actually he's been rotated a wee bit that's my only um sort of hesitation um i'm quite tempted by harvey elliott i must admit um he's been playing very well um salah's been a big injury doubt etc as well so that kind of makes sense. Forward wise, I might end up just dropping Alvarez in here, right? Um, Phil Foden will come back in a wee minute because they're playing the spare. So Alvarez Doku. Doku wasn't so good today, in all honesty. Um Vinicius, quite a big game player as well. Hmm. This is an interesting one. Missy is in pretty good form too. They've got to go Vinicius. Um, so, I, you know, they drop down Jalen Alvarez. I don't know. I mean, he, I suppose he's still a rotation risk as well, right? So, as is Fodden. I mean, Fodden had a wee knock at the end. Um, I suppose I could just go work and cock you there. I think he'll start against Porto and then there's just a risk that they'll, they'll mess about with the midfield a wee bit in terms of midweek. Um, but there we go. That's, they're still a really strong team, right? So 
think I'm gonna have to update that pen and like some team news and stuff as well. Um, All Star Rare Plus, so your champion will be pretty pretty hard midweek as well. But um, we'll see what the sort of differences are here. So All Star Rare Plus, you've got four star rares, seven hundred and ten dollars for first, and then champion Europe. You have less cards, two stars, and less in terms of F. So, yeah, I mean, I, I always have favoured the All Star, so I like guess just one of those. Got to kind of stick with that, to be honest. See, it's a shame about Hiradeki. Um, it's not, doesn't usually play there, so there we go. So, I think in this, you know, kind of got to go with Kelly here. Um, Liverpool are not always the best in terms of clean sheets, but. I don't really trust the kind of combination of like stones because stones can be rotated. Um, Virgil can definitely be rotated. There's no doubt about that. Um, but I don't really mind dropping them down in these game weeks. Honestly, like if I'm a really good like challenger, um, sorry, champion type lineup, then fair dues. But um, so then. That's where the other decisions are coming in, so hang on, let's get it right but it'd help if we're on the right bit. Um Trent's kinda of struggling just now. Um don't know if he'll be back in or not. Imagine he will be back in some point soon, but might start from the bench. Um Callie's get a really high expected score. John Mota, not why he's appearing up there. Kevin De Bruyne. Interestingly, Foden was taking a lot of set pieces today as well, so Messi and Suarez, both really high expect scores. So that's kind of interesting, actually, because Nashville, I always regard as being quite quite good at home. So I wonder whether, actually, I should just keep this for champion, right, and just use Gill and stuff in here. So so I could go, like, um, Cali's Gill, uh, Luis Suarez, the GOAT, absolute GOAT. And then I've got to use some super rares, right? So I see what sort of options I've got here. Super rare defender. Stefan Rostovsky's always quite a good shout. Um, bit shorter choice midweek. I thought I could use Valentin Gomez in there as well. It's been pretty solid. Yeah. Rostovsky against Palk. Hmm. Interesting one. I really don't know the moment was. I'll go back to all this. Um, goalkeeper wise, no, I don't have anybody who really can fancy too much there. So, what I probably keep tripping for the other under 23 slot. So, let's see what the script is in terms of goalkeeper scores. Again, it's all quite close. I think it's like I'm going to be probably tinkering with this a bit. Hideki, he's not playing. Rodrigo Ray always puts up a, a bit of AA as well. Um, Messi or Gil, blah. Nashville are better defensively than than Orlando. Um, but they just looked kind of buzzing Miami, so kind of interesting. Then we'll pick the champion team, so we'll not have much ongoing limited-wise. Um it's obviously quite focused on Celtic now, so I guess it lets me do this. It lets me put in Kelly here and um, Big Verge here. So then we could go with Man City. I mean, Man City do concede a bit as well, so this could be a reasonably good strategy. Um, could be an argument for just going to full stack as well. There's no doubt about that. So Phil Foden's playing so well just now. We've got to put him in. Um, Doku, I'm not sure if he'll start or not. I think maybe Alvarez will come in for Doku, in all honesty. Musiala, been playing pretty well for Bayern. Um, so again, kind of short of having enough um, super rares. I do want to have a team in. Danny Parejo is an interesting one. <laughs> Free assist today. Really good. 
second. And this is the thing with Pep Roulette, like John Stones, like I'd love to whack him in, but like he's just such a big risk that he'll be on the bench. But I mean these guys are all can all put up really nice kind of peak type scores. Um it's a big game for Man City. I'm gonna back De Bruyne. I mean Fodden outscored him today, but yeah, I mean and that's that's that should have a chance. Just it's not maxed out because of not having the two sort of um Super rares, but I think I'd rather go with the Bar- um, De Bruyne and Foden rares at home than play like Danny Parejo away at um, Marseille as well. Um, so there we go. Done a bit of lineup, but that's 25 minutes already. It's amazing. Um, check in on the current lineups for the game week. So um, some have done better than others, as you can see. Um, it's Premier League in season, not much happened. Don't want to talk about Celtic, so let's just skip that. <laughs> Don't want to talk about them. Um, Captive, 40 rare, pretty poor. Kind of gambled on Barzik playing, actually, and Sebastian Zemanski, two big chances missed as well. Torch up. Oh, got some movement here. Who scored? And it's Frenzy against Sporting. Really need the Cremonese. Clean sheet to hold as well, show that in a minute. So this was the, the biggest hope of the weekend. This was sitting first. Vinicius Junior got a late um, error led to goal added, so um so it won't be a podium anymore. Shame if that hadn't been added, that it might have been a podium, still got Arsenal to go as well. But brilliant result. Um hopefully you hold on for a tier one champion Europe, which is pretty awesome to be honest. Um all the ex Celtic rejects and stuff all coming together here. So Nat Phillips and David Turnbull. Um, Tumble pretty nice score actually, so did get an assist as well. I think he was taking some sets, so kind of interesting to see if he nails a place for Cardiff. Historically a good scorer. Um, under 23 there, so that's a good chance. Trubin at um, half eight, so that's what we're going to be doing after this. So 200s, um, Schlotterbeck and Fodden, um, pretty good. Um, Doku, the disappointment. Matt O'Reilly still managed a 56 and a 2 0 defeat with 10 men, so. Not too bad. Um, Szymanski let this one down. This was kind of really frustrating because, um, if that's a phrase, um, Frimpong took off at half time. I think he was on a yellow, so he probably didn't want to risk it. And um, Spassi and Szymanski, two big chances missed. So that, that could have been like top 30 or whatever, but there we go. Um, Man City conceded, so nothing much in the champion plus. Um, under 23 there plus, so... This has got a really good chance. As we were saying, we need the Cremonese clean sheet to stick. Um, this is another example of value. I mean, I mentioned this previous video, Alejandro Francis. So this guy was 20 quid. I mean, you know, plays in the um, Barzaragos in the second division and all that sort of stuff. But it's a really good young player. And uh, he sees kind of coming up in some of these lists and stuff in terms of expected scores. So, so I'm pretty pleased with that pick, to be honest. Um, we'll see the game's not finished yet. Um, I don't know if that this will hold. I mean, it's four hundred and nineteen. Seems a bit low, right? So unless Francis really gets some good A in the last sort of five ten minutes, then I'd imagine that'll be kind of top ten ish, maybe outside that. Um, but we'll see. Um, All Star Super Rare was horrific. Um, this has got a kind of half chance. I mean, I was disappointed with Coy conceding. Like, literally only faced like one shot all game. Virgil good score. Alvarez getting assist. This I guess if Rice and Martinelli go really big um, could could sneak a card to hope somebody scored here. Please don't tell me it's Steven against Cremonese. No, it's not. Sport in Lisbon. That's fine. Um, and then I actually finally managed to pick a right target somewhere. So um, sneaked into the $150 here. So pretty pleased about that. So there we go. Some lineup building for midweek. More of a preview as well. It's kind of tougher midweek. Um, I'd mentioned before as well about we'll maybe do a wee challenge of um, getting some money together and picking some teams. Um, I don't really want to be doing that for midweek Champions League games, etc. Because you're not going to do much with a hundred quid budget or whatever in game weeks like that. So we'll start that in some of the future game weeks or maybe after the international break. We'll see because probably need a wee bit of time to plan the first sort of buys and things if we're delving back into the limiteds. But anyway, that's half an hour. Um, covered off a lot of stuff. Um, definitely we're winning some stuff on Tuesday, which I'm always. Very grateful for it was brilliant watching Fodden today as well. Like just kinda just get that feeling of yes, just one hand and oh, that's right, it's right in the top bag. Um obviously everybody knows Phil Fodden's good, but um it's good to see him still thriving with the Bruyne and the team and stuff, getting some set pieces from one side and everything as well. So yeah, we're back for Tuesday. Um 
terms of the rewards video. In fact, no, actually, I won't. I'm going out on Tuesday, so that might have to be a wee bit late. Um, might just record that on Wednesday morning or something. But anyway, I'm waffling now. Um, so if you're still getting in for on going for the weekend, or you're playing midweek weekend, customary fashion, good luck. Go for it.